what the DFL are trying to do is invite investors into the Bundesliga or the top into the DFL should I say and what they aim to do is obviously pump money in one is for the media aspect of it um, which in itself is ad, as things currently stand some aspects of the Bundesliga media are quite poor especially with um, when it comes to sharing highlights and stuff because as soon as you share it you will immediately get copyrighted and the highlights will be dis which obviously in itself is quite hard to share the league but on top of that they're just pumping money into it and that should be more money for the teams to spend on whatever um, obviously this is end up being something that's rather unpopular with literally every Bundesliga team apart from surprise surprise RB Leipzig <laughs> now I myself I'm also torn on it. I think you can see the benefits of having investors into the league as it means there's obviously more money and with the fact that the Premier League just continues to have money pumped into it it's creating a gap and it, it literally requires stuff like this to happen. Um, so that is the only positive in my opinion but then the rest of it you're basically risking a bunch of people who don't actually care about the football itself coming in and trying to influence it to to benefit themselves especially because it's investors all they care about is making more money and then it also results in clubs potentially just recklessly spending money i i think if you look at her to berlin they are the prime example of teams that recklessly spend money and it's got them nowhere and obviously in other parts of europe we see that as well mainly looking at chelsea so yeah, the whole idea of having investors in into the league is quite polarizing. I mean, from my point of view, I've I've never really liked the money side of, of football very much. I I've in, in an ideal world, football would just be about football, and like all of this investing and sponsors and all of that. But at the end of the day, like it it, it needs to be like what you want your league to to do. If you want to keep like an even league where everyone has like a competitive chance against the other, Bayern Munich is a special case because I don't know what, what the hell is going on there. But if you want, if you want everyone to be like on fair and decently even footing, if that's your aim, then you probably don't want investors. And I think that's one of the reasons why the Bundesliga is quite attractive is because there's no like huge disparity or like foreign investors, like kind of like screwing up your clubs because it's not a guarantee that foreign investment or just in general investment will get you like um will get you like uh in a good place like look at valencia they like I, I think it's a singaporean company that went in pumped a bunch of money and then like you said like they don't actually care about the football they just care about the money and now like when things are like going down the drain they like they started building a new stadium for like no reason they stopped it because i don't know they just couldn't and now the club is like in shambles um conversely of course you have Man City, PSG that have succeeded with a lot of investment. Um, RB Leipzig, like you said, if investment, if heavy investment was to be like allowed, would probably explode. But yeah, so if you want to like keep stability in your league, you don't want investment uh, of that sort. And and like I said, like that's one of the things that makes the Bundesliga quite attractive, is that is that you have um, teams doing well, kind of like through their own merit. But at the same time, if you want your league to compete with the best, like right right now we're seeing um, Tebas is, for, for example, the effect of Tebas or, or uh, oh, sorry, the effect of Tebas's decisions for like La Liga's investment and and like money reasons, I don't really know what, what the exact financial details of it are, are really hurting teams. Um, Serie A is also in a really bad financial situation and teams are really suffering, like, like we saw in some European competitions we saw internally, like uh, I, I think the net spend of La Liga in in the winter transfer window was like five million. Like 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 throughout the whole league, the net spend was five million or something like that. Uh, similar with Serie A, it was like ridiculous. And so when, when you have the Premier League, where teams like in Bournemouth are spending like a net thirty million like each each transfer window, and we're, let's not even talk about like the really big teams. Uh, not that Bournemouth aren't massive, but like. Um, if you want to compete with that, like, but they're not. You, though. That's that's the thing. They're not. They have a stadium of nine thousand, and they're in the I, Premier League spending that much money. Yeah, I, I, exactly. Yeah, literally. And if you want your teams, especially like your more medium-sized teams, to be competing, 
uh, with the Premier League and other like heavy investment uh, leagues, of which currently I guess there's nothing like the Premier League right now. But still, like like you you, you can't survive without investment. Like at the end of the day, maybe Bayern Munich will keep up and they'll be able to um to stay on even footing with the best in Europe. But like eventually, other teams like maybe Dortmund and such wouldn't be able to keep up. Leverkusen can have a glorious season this season, but then if you have like for example, as an example, let's take um well I, I don't know like, like West Ham. West Ham gets a big investor. Newcastle, fucking Newcastle is a perfect example. Newcastle get a huge investment, and then suddenly they can outcompete Leverkusen on every single front because they can spend like forty million in every position, maybe sixty million, where Leverkusen can spend like ten million. Like like it just it just you can't compete. We saw it in the summer as well, where there was. Um, Diego Carlos from Sevilla, a, literally a team in the Champions League, got poached by Aston Villa, and Bubakar Sumare, who was heavily linked to Atletico, also went to Aston Villa. Aston Villa, who were like the bottom table, it was crazy. Uh, and yeah, so like it depends what where your aim for the league is. If if you want to to grow and you want to compete with foreign leagues, with other European leagues, like you can't run away from from the fact that that football is more of a money game now than it's ever been before. But if you if you want to keep it more of like a every DVZ kind of make it even, keep a keep it keep it within, like uh, like isolate yourself and make it even and stable within your league. Like it, 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 that's how I see it. So there, there's that decision of what do you go for. And and this is the thing: the whole investors. It means the richer getting richer. So the way that the money will be separated and split up is the exact same as the TV money. So as it stands as, with the TV money. Bayern Munich received the most of it. And then you've got Borussia Dortmund receiving the next most. I understand it's going to be quite difficult to go to Bayern Munich. Hey, take less money so we can give it to other teams. But without some way to convince these people that this is the way for the greater good, Bayern Munich will continue, this wealth gap will continue to stay the same. No matter if, for example, I don't know, Schalke receive a lot of money the wealth gap is still going to be there and you see that with the Premier League it doesn't matter with no difference in wealth between the likes of Southampton and Manchester City um, no matter the fact that Southampton will receive more money than Bayern Munich it still doesn't make a difference the gap is still there